The church of Sardis in Revelation are the martyrs of the great tribulation, the fifth seal. Jesus' letter to the church of Sardis in Revelation is one of the most misunderstood epistles in the Bible. Rather than being written to a dead church, as today's world wants us to believe, instead it is about the martyrs alive during the great tribulation, during the time of the fifth seal. It is Jesus' instructions to those enduring that most difficult time. That's what we're talking about today, and we're starting right now. Jesus is pretty clear that this letter is not to a dead, faithless church any old time in the last 2,000 years, but rather is specifically written to those who will see him return on the clouds. Did you know that? Let's look at how we can know this. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. This is a pretty amazing passage that we will continue to look at later in this video, but right now, what is most interesting is how Jesus says he will come like a thief to those who don't wake up. Coming like a thief is something that can only happen to those still alive at the return of Jesus. Those who died years ago can't have Jesus come like a thief to them. This clearly places the letter to Sardis as applying to those living during the 70th week of Daniel, or some call it the tribulation period. It isn't a universal letter. It's a letter to an end time church. This is the sixth video in a series about the seven letters to the churches of Revelation. In this series, we have discovered that all the letters fit into this category, that they're all letters of instruction to the one and only church of Jesus Christ as they undergo various trials. These seven letters relate to the seven seals. Each of the letters refer to its relative seal in order. In other words, the first letter refers to the first seal, the second letter to the second, etc. Now, this letter is the fifth letter and it relates to the fifth seal, as you will see. The videos that we just talked about are all contained in a playlist, and a link to this is down in the description below this video if you want to watch them all in order. So now we know who it was written to, let's explore the letter. The name of the city, Sardis, is derived from the semi-precious gemstone, Sardius. A Sardius stone is white, with red streaks within it, which is very appropriate for the martyrs of the fifth seal, those martyred in the Great Tribulation. They are white or pure, and they're then martyred, which is the red streaks in the stone. Jesus refers to the color white in this letter. Yet you still have a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will never blot his name out of the book of life. This clothing, white garments, is consistent throughout the book of Revelation. It is a consistent theme or sign for the transformation into resurrection bodies. In this letter to Sardis, the white garments are promised to the church. In Revelation 6.11, they are given the white garments, but told not to put them on just yet. In Revelation 19.7-8, through 8, we see the church putting on the garments. Then, in Revelation 9, we finally see the saints wearing the garments and standing before the throne of God. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. There are several distressing aspects of these white garments in these verses. First, in the letter to Sardis, we saw that there were only a few at the fifth seal who won't have soiled their garments. And remember, this is a church. 
So, just like the parable of the ten virgins, where half of them are foolish virgins, here again, Jesus is telling us that only a few are saved at the time of the Great Tribulation. Most have their oil run out of their lamps, and they will fall away from the faith. They soil their garments. This is the great apostasy Paul spoke of in 2 Thessalonians 2.3. In that verse, he calls it the apostasy. Apostasy is something that's occurring right now. But it isn't the apostasy, the one that takes place during the Great Tribulation, the unmistakable final apostasy. What we're facing now is just common apostasy, people walking away from the faith, but not in numbers so great that no one can deny it is the apostasy. When faced with the choice of dying a martyr's death for Jesus or committing this apostasy and worshiping the Antichrist, Jesus is telling us a vast number in the church today will turn away from the faith and all within a very short time. This is what Jesus was talking about when he said, remember then what you received and heard, keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come to you like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Jesus said he will be coming against these former churchgoers when he returns. He can only be against them if they fell away from the faith. So the church of Sardis is a dead church in two ways. Many in the church will physically die a martyr's death and many will choose to die spiritually instead and walk away from the faith. Two forms of death. And for most, it will be one or the other. And the number of those who die for their faith is preordained. Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. When we sing the song, when the saints go marching in, we sing, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Unfortunately, most churchgoers aren't imagining <laughs> that that number might be the number of martyrs that are preordained in this verse. However, it is interesting that this great division in the church between the martyrs and those in apostasy isn't obvious to the world around them. Look what Jesus has to say. I know your works. You have the reputation of being alive, but you are dead. The reputation in the world is that this is still a church. I find that very interesting. But it's a church in which most have rejected Jesus as the Son of God. I think this is telling us something about the Great Tribulation. It's giving us a clue. It's telling us that there will still be churches during the Great Tribulation, except the people in them will not be worshiping Jesus as the Son of God. They will be worshiping the Antichrist in their same churches, possibly still called Christians. I find that very interesting, and it might be something that you want to make some comments about down in the comments section. This brings us to Jesus' instructions to those who are still alive. Wake up and strengthen what remains and is about to die, for I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. God has a special job for these Christians. He specifically says, that their works are not yet complete in his sight. The task of those who wake up to the reality that they are now in the great tribulation is that they are to strengthen those who are about to die. What does God mean by this? Well, for one, those who are awake are to strengthen those others about to lay down their lives for Christ, to encourage them and build up their faith not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near, there will be great temptation to hide in the last days when you see the day drawing near. As 
the world is going to begin to hunt down Christians. But we are to assemble together and encourage one another regardless. The second way those who are awake can strengthen those about to die is to strengthen those about to commit apostasy. Those about to die spiritually. The true believers can do this by being role models of courage in the face of death. It's likely that many will die in public executions. They will be asked to either pledge allegiance to and worship the Antichrist or die. Those who choose death will give strength to those still in line, waiting to be asked that inevitable question. If everyone in line gives in to the Antichrist, it will be harder to resist him. But if several courageous saints choose martyrdom instead, it will strengthen those still on the fence. So during the Great Tribulation, the task of Christians still alive is to strengthen those in their churches. One can't do that if they're hiding. That is something key to understand about the Great Tribulation. And Jesus calls those who sacrifice in this way the ones who overcome. Jesus says how they will be rewarded as well. I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. This is exactly what he preached during his earthly ministry. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body and after that have nothing more they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. And I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But the one who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. Again, Jesus ties being acknowledged before God as being willing to lay down your life. Jesus wants churchgoers to know it is very important to not think that we will escape our times. Rather, the Bible is so clear over and over and over again in the Gospels and in Revelation that Christians should be prepared to die for their faith. Maybe you won't have to, but we need to be prepared to do so. But what happens to those who don't choose to die but compromise? The very next letter to the churches, the letter to Laodicea, chronicles the situation of those left behind at the rapture of the church. Many mistakenly think we are living as part of the Laodicean church right now, but this is mistaken. This is an end time church. This seventh letter is the letter to those living after the seventh seal. So click right here to keep watching and learn the fate of those who endure the wrath of God and Jesus' special instructions to them so that they might still be saved. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.